Good morning, everyone, and I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Um, I was thinking over the weekend about um, how big our school is. So lots of schools have got kind of half the number of children and half the number of teachers that we've got. And I was just thinking that how important every single one of us is in our school. Um, and sometimes you might feel a little bit, uh, well, I'm just one person out of 440 pupils. No one's going to notice me. What can I do? I'm just a, a tiny little part of the school. Well, actually, you can do amazing things because making our school so wonderful is because each one of us is different and special and has something to give. So then I got to thinking about a story for today that kind of fitted in with what I was thinking about. And I decided on David and Goliath. This is a story that some of you might have heard from the Christian Bible, but not probably not for quite a while. And it tells the tale of somebody who was very, very small, very insignificant. No one really knew him, but somebody who did something amazing. So here we go. Now David wished he could be just like his three older brothers. They were away fighting in the war with the fierce Philistines. But David was too young to join the great army of King Saul like them. He was too young to strap on his armour and gird on his sword and face the warriors. He was too young to fight to defend his country and his religion, to fight for his God like they all were. Well, that's what David's father, the white-haired Jesse, kept telling him anyway. So David found himself stuck at home, looking after his father's sheep and listening to his father worry day and night about his other sons away in battle. One evening, David returned home from his peaceful day out on the pastures with the sheep to find that his father was packing some grain, some bread and some cheeses. I'm sending you to take these supplies to your brothers, David said old Jesse with an anxious look on his face. It will be a dangerous trip and I'm in half a mind not to send you at all. But they can't have very much left to keep them going. And besides, I'm desperate to hear news of how they are. David's heart leapt within his chest. At last, he was going on an adventure. He tried not to look too excited to be leaving his old father alone at home, but he couldn't help the bright glint in his eye as he waved goodbye and set off on his horse. After several days of hard riding, David had gained a bruised bottom and an aching back, and he'd lost a little of his reckless enthusiasm. In fact, when David finally reached King Saul's army camp, he no longer felt very excited at all. He found the soldiers exhausted and running away from the battlefield as fast as their wobbly legs could carry them. The retreating troops threatened to trample David underfoot as they swarmed back into the camp. And David was very glad when he finally recognised the familiar faces of his brothers among the troops. Whatever's going on, David gasped. It's a, it's a giant. It's a, a real... Live, giant, panted one of his brothers. Whenever we go out to face the Philistine army in a battle, their troops don't come out to meet us. Instead, they send the giant Goliath, who challenges us to settle things by a duel, just him and one of us. It sounds fair enough, but you should see the size of him. There's no way anyone in their right mind would face him alone. So we run away. And Goliath and the Philistines stand there hurling insults at us. At that, little David felt his blood begin to boil. You mean to say that no one's tried to beat this giant, he marvelled. Our whole army is a laughing stock. And he marched off to find King Saul. At first, King Saul was highly amused when his guard showed a little shepherd boy into his tent who demanded, I want you to let me fight Goliath. God's given me the strength to fight lions and bears when I'm looking after my sheep. And now he'll give me the strength to fight this giant too. There was a strange light of faith gleaming in the boy's eyes. So much against his better judgment, King Saul decided to let the little shepherd boy have a go after all. The king brought his own very best armour for David and helped dress him up in it. But the armour was really heavy. It totally swamped him. He could hardly move in it. 
So David took the whole caboodle off again. There he stood in his simple shepherd's robe with his crook, his catapult and a bag of five round stones. And that's how he strode out to face the huge giant. So there's David. You can just see him at the bottom of the page there. That's what he looked like as opposed to the giant. Goliath, the giant, was far and away the biggest man that David had ever seen. He had legs like tree trunks and he carried a spear the size of a battering ram. When the giant saw the tiny figure of the little shepherd boy coming out to meet him, he threw back his head and roared with laughter. Then he stomped forwards over the earth, ready to rip David apart like a rag doll. David gulped as the mighty man came storming towards him. He could feel the ground shaking as the giant thundered nearer and he set a stone onto his catapult. Now he could see the big scar on the giant's chin and the way his bristly eyebrows joined in the middle. That's how close he was. David took aim and fired. Wham! The little stone sank right into the centre of the giant's forehead. What? Whoa, what happened? gasped Goliath as he collapsed. He never found out because David rushed up and finished off the job. And King Saul army, Saul's army chased the stunned Philistine soldiers all the way back to their own cities. Wow. So it just shows you that somebody so small like David, little shepherd boy who nobody knew, just somehow did something that nobody else had managed to do. He beat the huge giant. And no matter how small you are, how insignificant you might feel sometimes, you might be sitting at the back of the classroom and, you know, think, oh, my teacher's not spoken to me today or, you know, no one's noticed I'm here. But you know what? They do. People notice whether you realise that or not. And you sitting there, can do amazing things however small you are however tall you are it makes no difference each one of us can do special things put your mind to it decide that you're going to do something really good really special and go for it okay thanks for listening everybody have a nice week goodbye <laughs>